Hey, good morning, everyone. Lee Lowell here from smartoptionseller.com. Today is Saturday, July 9th, 2022. We're back for another edition of our Saturday synopsis. We look at the charts, see what's been going on in the stock market, see what may happen moving forward. I'm a technical analyst. I look at the charts. That's my main go-to to figure out when it's time to get in and out of trades. Fundamental data, fundamental analysis is, is another way people look for trade entries. That's how they figure out what the how the sales, earnings, growth, PE ratios, dividends, all that good stuff underlying a company affects how they're going to move in, in the future. I'm under the impression that and the belief that all that data traded by millions of people around the world every single day is gets fa- is and gets factored into the charts. Everyone knows this public information and it gets reflected on the charts. So that's really all I need to concentrate on. So we look at the charts. That's what I've been doing for the last 30 years or so. Been trading stocks, commodities, options, everything basically. And I look at the charts to to give me a clue of what's been going on. So I'm here on Saturdays, most Saturdays, to give you these free YouTube videos to show you what I'm seeing in the markets and and kind of make a game plan, see what's going on for the week coming forward. So let's just jump right in as we always do. We look at the charts. We start with the S&P 500. Uh, by using the SPY, which is the exchange traded fund for the S&P 500. On your screen here, what you see is the charts that I look at. I got about a two year back history here on daily charts. I look at the daily charts because I like to have a more longer term basis. I'm not an intraday trader. I don't trade one minute charts or five minute charts. It's just something that I could never really do. I, I think the market's just too erratic. I, I've never really been able to come up with some kind of system or game plan to help me trade one minute charts, five minute charts. It's just too, too random. So I like to move out to the long term charts. I'm a more, I have a more longer term approach. I look at, you know, months, years, decades into the future. I'm a buy and hold kind of guy. I've got my retirement accounts. So I have stocks for the long, long run. And that's been rewarded for anyone in that type of situation over time. If you hold you will be rewarded. Uh, short-term trading, it's a tough gig, but if you can do it, more power to you. But anyway, so we look at the longer-term charts. In our in our uh, newsletters at the Smart Options Seller, we sell put spreads, we sell naked put options because we like to take advantage of a market that over the long run goes up over time. So we're, we're more bullish traders and most of our trades last anywhere from two to three months out in time, so a little bit longer time frame. It, it helps us weather the the erraticness of these, the, you know, the short term moves, the intraday moves, the daily moves. We like to take a little bit of a longer term outlook. So, so what do we see here on the chart? I have my daily chart, bar chart, open, high, low, close bars, and down here is the RSI, 14 day RSI, and I only have three moving averages. I got a 20 day, 50 day, and 200 day simple moving averages to help me gauge where you know I think the, the market is going, what it's doing, what's happening. And we basically just visualize what's on the charts. We, we, we check the price action, which is basically which way the stock or our market is moving. And we draw these channels. You can see these, these blue channels this uptrend here, this little downtrend here. And there's also other patterns. Uh, this is a flagpole, a flag pattern, and we look for support and resistance levels. And the RSI down here gives us a, an idea of whether our stock or index is overbought or oversold. We have the 80 level and the 20 level, and the and the, the you know the oscillator moves in between those levels. Most of the time it's around the you know the 50, the mid-range level. So right now the stock market is basically, according to the RSI, not overbought, not oversold, but we wa- we look at the price action. So let's kind of see where the market's been and what we can possibly think about next week. As we know, if you've been following the markets, we've been in a downtrend since basically January 1st of 2022. It's been a long six month grueling downtrend. You just eyeball the chart. You can just see the market is going down. With fits and starts, you got up moves as well, but we're caught in this overall down move. And it's been tough for a lot of people. We haven't endured this type of a long-term six-month downtrend in a long time. And as the, the, the statistics, the data show that this is the worst six months to, to the start of a year in a very long time. I think it's like 50 years or whatever. So as you can see, 
um, we can just visualize, we draw some channels here uh, just to see where the market it, where the market is kind of trading in, right? So we're in this downtrend. This helps you visualize where we are. Now we can remove this. All patterns can re be removed over a period of time. So we'll re remove that so we can get a better look. So as you can see, the stock market, the S&P 500 is in this downtrend right now. But we have the the you know the snapback rallies that just have been getting sold since January. Right, so here's the beginning of the year. We get the down move, and it gets goes up, and then it gets hit back down, goes up, down, up, and then this since basically April, this this has been a pretty nasty move these last few months here. So where do we stand now? What can we see? Well, last week when I made the video, we had come back down, so we were down here. All right, and um, I had said that if the market is going to rally back up it's probably going to rally up and touch the downtrending 20-day moving average, which is the blue line right here. So here we were um, last week. You know, the market had come off the lows, rallied all the way back. This was two weeks ago right here. And the last week we came back down again. And this week, what we did was good. We came up, we got above the 20-day moving average. But what we have right here lurking is the top of the downtrending channel, okay? So we're, we're sort of caught in this channel here. The market's moved up nicely, and it's sort of rubbing right up against the downtrending top line of the channel. So the big question is, will the market have enough juice next week to pop outside of the channel and then challenge the next resistance, which is this downtrending 50-day moving average right here? So the market is all about you know, finding these support and resistance zones and then getting through them if they can, if it can, it's the market, it's an it. So we like, I like how it bounced here. I like how it bounced here and it got through the 20 day moving average. Now we have to contend with the downtrending line, which is keeping it in this, this channel here. All right. So we're going to see next week. Um, we've got to get out of the channel and possibly intersect with the 50-day moving average. So over the next week, we're looking at, you know, the mid, low, 390s, you know, somewhere within the 390 to 400 range on the SPY, which is 3,900 to 4,000 on the S&P index itself. So that's what we're looking for next week. Get through this channel, see what it does to the 50-day moving average. If it can get through both of those, then it's, you know, we've got some momentum here to keep going on the upside. So in our newsletters, which are, you know, are bullish plays, we sell put options, put options, credit spreads. We've been taking it light over the last few months. Positions have been uh, less frequent, smaller, because we know that the market's caught in this downtrend. And it, there's no sense of putting your money at risk, bullish money, if you know the market is telling you, it, you know, it's been going down or it wants to go down. So we don't know yet if this current little rally right here of the last week is going to get resisted and get knocked back down again. Don't know that yet until we see next week's action. I'd like to see it break through the downtrending channel, get through the 50-day moving average and start moving up. You know, so we can see what might happen. Right here for now, we can maybe draw this little uptrending line. We got this little, you know, uptrend that's within the broader downtrend. So we'll see. If this uptrend can continue, then maybe we've got the beginnings of the next leg of the move and maybe the second half of 2022 could, you know, go up in earnest. So, you know, that's what we're keeping an eye on. Let's look at the NASDAQ and we use the triple Qs as our gauge for that. Like the S&P 500, January, you know, we got the downtrend and then starting in April had the really severe downtrend. This has been tough for a lot of people. Uh, here we are down near the bottom. The triple Qs came right back up this week, got through the 20-day moving average here, and finished. You can see how it just touched right here. This bar right here is yesterday, Friday, July 8th, this one bar. You can see the very top of the bar is the high of the day. Okay, so we zoom in here a little bit. I mean, it just like magic, it intersected right with this downsloping 50-day moving average. Here is the high of the day. So these, these moving averages, they really act like magnets sometimes. I mean, because 
so many people are watching the same thing. So many people are trading the same thing that they're all watching for the same things to occur, which would be resistance at the, you know, a, a moving average level. I mean, it's not a coincidence that we, we stopped right here at the 50 day moving average. So next week, just like the S&P 500, we want to see this thing pop through and start moving higher. We have the 200 day moving average up here lurking. So we'll see if we can get that high. Uh, we'll see what it does when it connects with this. Um, you know, we have this overall, if you want to draw a longer term kind of channel, it's, you know, it's a little messy, but you can see overall it's caught in this downtrending, you know, and you can always draw these smaller channels as well. I mean, it's it's in the eye of the beholder. It's not black and white. There's no right or wrong way to draw these things. It's just what you see. Someone else who's a, you know a chartist might be seeing something completely different from what I'm seeing. And so, uh, but this is how I do it, and this is what I'm seeing. We're still caught in the downtrend, and we have the up moves that for now have been getting sold back down. So we don't know if next week the triple Qs will get knocked back down. Don't know yet. Um, you know, we don't really want to make predictions. We want to follow the price action and let it tell us what to do. So that's the cues. Let's look at the Dow. We use the diamonds, the DIA. That's the exchange traded fund for the Dow. Now the Dow had been caught in this longer term sideways channel. I'm going to remove this, you know, so it's not so jumbled up. And you can see generally, basically since January, the market's been in the downtrend, just like all the other indexes. And here the Dow got through the 20 day moving average, which is good. And here's the 50 day lurking above. So it's all about what's going to happen when the Dow and the S&P 500 meet upon the 50 day. Now the, the, the NASDAQ already met it. So it'll be interesting to see how we play out next week. But in the longer term, we're still in this downtrending channel. We really need to see, you know, a good month or two of price action that's going upwards and creating a new upwards channel. That'll give us a clue that, okay, the bears are, are, are starting to step aside and the bulls are re reclaiming some dominance. Uh, I don't think we're completely there yet, but this, you know, little two week move up move here, two, three week up move is is constructive but we don't know but you know you could have said that about here you could have said that about here and it all still got knocked back down so we you have to be playing with a little bit of caution if you're if you're bullish right now you don't want to jump the gun all right so that's for the indexes we look at some individual charts as well as we do every saturday let's just jump right in let's start with tesla here I get a lot of a lot of comments on Tesla, a lot of requests to go over Tesla. You can see the chart's been marked up here. Uh, Tesla, the last few weeks as we've been talking, it's 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 hovering right above and below the seven hundred dollar range or the seven hundred dollar level. You can see the this blue line here, and then below that, this was the other support area. Just I drew this in the last couple weeks. So this. This area right here seems to be, you know, from, you know, low 600s to high 700s. We can even draw another little line here sort of at the top that it's showing us this is the current range right here. I know there's a lot of lines on here, um, but this is what you do. You kind of draw these lines to give you a, some some support and resistance levels. So right now, Tesla is caught in this 600 to 800 dollar range. Um, let's see. So after the close, uh, we're going to look at Twitter too, because there was some activity in Twitter after the market closed yesterday. So once again, Tesla caught in between this 600 to 800 with 700 level being the, you know, the midpoint here going back to, to last summer. Uh, we probably want to see it for the bulls Tesla break out above 800 and then Here's the 200 day right here, a little above 900. You want to see how it reacts to that. So it's all about how the, the stock or market will react to the moving averages and, and other support and resistance prior areas. OK, so for right now, we're in this range. Um, if you know, if Tesla comes back down again and it holds here, then it could be a good spot to, you know, possibly jump into bullish positions. You want to take this this 
channel and use it to your advantage. Okay, if it holds at a certain spot, if it holds up here and gets knocked back down, then you know it could be a shorting opportunity, maybe buying some put options. If it comes back down, holds here and bounces or starts to bounce, you know, it could be a good place to buy shares or um, call options. So use these channels to your advantage. Now, let's look at Twitter real quick because, you know, after the market closed yesterday, Friday, July 8th, uh, Elon Musk is telling Twitter that he, you know, he wants out of the deal. He wants to walk away from buying Twitter because he believes Twitter is, you know, withholding information from him about how many bot accounts and how many fake spam accounts Twitter has. And Twitter says that they've given him all that information. You know, in my opinion, I, I just think Musk wants to try to negotiate a better deal, a cheaper deal. I mean, his deal was to buy Twitter for like $54 a share. You know, when it popped, this is when he said, I'm buying. And then it's fallen since then. So obviously he's having some buyer's remorse. Um, it's, you know, it's like you buy something and all of a sudden it goes on sale and you, and you can't take advantage of the sale. I think that's what Elon Musk is feeling right now. Twitter's just got knocked back down and he doesn't want to pay $54 a share when it's now trading in the mid 36 range. So whether, whether Twitter has given him all that information or not, I think he's, he's trying to, you know, play the game of, well, you didn't give me all the information, so I'm not buying it at that price now. And after the market, closed yesterday so here it closed at 36.81 news came out after the market closed so if we go to the aftermarket look on the one minute chart you can see here's the market close at 4 p.m eastern uh and then over here 4 p.m eastern and then a little while later musk elon musk said i'm not buying and you can see how twitter dropped pretty good in just a couple minutes time uh close to 33 and a half shares rallied back so at the end of trading, extended trading at 8 p.m. Eastern last night, Friday, July 8th, Twitter closed around $35. Uh, here's the close of a regular market, 36.81. So we'll see where Twitter opens up uh, Monday morning. Markets open up uh, the pre-market 4 a.m. Eastern time. So if you you know you can't sleep and you're up at 4 a.m. in the morning, take a look, see where Twitter's trading at that time of day. Anyway, so that's Twitter. I don't, you know, I, I have no stake, no position. Too much happening. You don't want to, you don't want to get into a stock like that when there's too many, too much headline risk. Uh, you know, ex exterior forces at play here. You don't want to get caught holding something, or you know, if you're short and then it could jump on you. It's too risky, in my opinion. So that's Twitter, Tesla, uh, Tesla. Let's see if Tesla got affected in that aftermarket. So Tesla closed around 752, regular market after hours. Uh, oh, so Tesla jumped pretty good. So here we closed at 752. So Tesla jumped a good, you know, $20 a share after that. Closed at 769 at the end of uh, the extended trading hours. So Tesla stock went up, Twitter stock went down. Um, a lot of stuff happens in the aftermarket, especially on these weekly options. If you trade weekly options and, um, you know, you had bought some 755 calls that expired at the end of regular trading hours, you thought the thing expired worthless, but you can hold on to it and call your broker, I think up until 5 PM or 5 30 PM Eastern. Uh, you know, you could have exercised those calls and, you know, made yourself some decent money after the market closes. So be careful if you're trading these weekly options, you know, you have to stick around till 5 p.m., 5.30 p.m. Eastern, another hour, hour and a half after the regular market closes. See what happens. Stuff like this. You can make a lot of money or you can leave a lot of money on the table. You got to be aware of, of how things are trading these days. All right. So let's see what else we got. We look at Apple. Apple. All right, it's done some decent movement. One third hit the low 130 a couple weeks ago, and now it closed at 147. It's gotten above this sort of uh, support area here or resistance area, depending on how you want to look at it, and it has moved above the 20 day and has now moved above the 50 day, which is good. You can see right here yesterday's trading got above the 50 day moving average. So we've got some momentum. Certain stocks have some momentum. That's good. You know, if you want to draw yourself a visual, you can start drawing your little your little channel here. Okay, so you can, let me redo this one here. You got your little 
upwards channel that's starting to grow. Want to see it keep going. So that's Apple. You know, looks good. Got kind of a V-shaped bounce here. Apple, um, you know, in the long run, you know, Apple's going to go up just like most of these great stocks will go up. It's it's just when the bottom will finally occur. As I say to you guys each week, I nibble on I nibble on the way down. You know, I'm never going to find the bottom. No one's ever going to find the bottom. But if you have conviction in the stock, you can nibble on the way down and get yourself some cheaper shares if you have, you know, the capital to do that. Some people want to wait until they see uh, a, a bullish move start in earnest and then they'll start to buy you know so no one will ever buy the bottom but i you know buying bits and pieces amd another favorite now there's a lot of lines here that we've been drawing over the last couple months amd came down very just just nicked the 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 last support line that i drew which was right in the low 70s pop just down here but then pop back above the next line we have is this this line right here, which is around the $85 level, we want to see AMD get back above that. But we have this blue 20-day moving average lurking above and this 50-day here. So AMD's got its work cut out for it. You know, I'm a believer in AMD. You got these chip stocks that the computers have been, you know, the force in our lives forever, and they're just getting more and more important. You got to have chips computer chips to run these computers and AMD is is a force in that sector I, I believe in the long run it's going to rally back and move back higher but for now it's still caught in this downtrend you can see just visually you can see the stocks in a downtrend so going all out bullish is not the smartest thing because it could always get knocked back down all right so that's AMD I, I'm holding out that it's going to go up go up in the long run Disney, same thing for me. You know, I talk about these same companies each week. Disney's still, still churning below this the one hundred dollar level, trying to get its act together. Can you go wrong with Disney as a long term hold? I don't know. Some people don't like Disney. I like Disney. Here's the COVID low, the COVID low in March twenty twenty, just below eighty dollars a share. It could come back down. Who knows? We've got the the still the up sloping 200 month moving average. This is a monthly chart. So you know this 80 level could be a magnet, or maybe maybe Disney will find its footing now and start to rally back back up. But you can see how it's hugging along the 20 day moving average here. So Disney's still kind of down in the dumps. Um, I like to see it get back up there. Yeah, another stalwart Nike. This is Nike. It clearly clearly in a downtrend i mean there's no question about it you know just the, the recent downtrend right here you can see the the channel here so nike still still moving down um can can nike be held down forever no don't know when it will finally get the mojo and go back up but when it does along with everything else it's gonna be a great buy from wherever it, it bounces from so you got Nike, Disney, AMD, Apple, all these stocks that you know will go up at some point. Uh, let's look at Microsoft. We look at the biggies. We look at the popular stocks. Microsoft still in this long, you can see this pretty wide downtrending channel. Just, just how it is. Uh, what's good about Microsoft, it has gotten now above the 50-day moving average. You can see here it's trading above the 50-day moving average. Next stop would be to connect with the top of the downtrending channel. Over the next few weeks, depending on how fast it moves, it could come anywhere in this range from maybe 270 to 280 in the next few weeks. You can see how if you visualize Microsoft going up, um, it can connect with the uptrending line or the downtrending upper channel. And will it get knocked back down or will it blast through? yet to be seen but we know for the time being the down move is the dominant direction right now intel which i don't you know i'm not interested in intel but i keep it on the charts just made another new low um intel's really been getting hit pretty good i'm going to remove this old line here let's take a look at the monthly see where intel so intel coming you know, not too far from the 200-month moving average in the low $30 range. Really, 
been coming down. You know, Intel sort of lost its dominance in the chip sector to AMD, NVIDIA, some of these other chip stocks. But, you know, here's a, a new low it's made of recent, kind of hugging along the 20-day the moving average here. So Intel, you know, I, I'm, I stay away. I'm more of an AMD guy. Um, other stocks, what else do we have? We can look at Amazon. Amazon had their stock split not that long ago, but you can see the support, pretty good support, just above $100 a share. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Basically seven attempts here at this $100 level. Has not been able to get through it yet. So that seems to be a pretty good area of support. Um, got through the 20 day moving average and just finished above the 50 day moving average the last two days, Thursday and Friday this week. Here's the, the down slipping 50 day. Can it continue upwards? We sort of see a, a W pattern forming here a little bit. You can see the W as I draw it out. Um, it would have to get you know above 130 to really, really gain the momentum of a W pattern working out. So um, you use the middle section of the W pattern as that resistance area. So getting above 130, if, if, if Amazon could do that, um, you know, I think that gives it another an, a shot towards the downsloping 200-day moving average. So keep an eye on um, that's Amazon. Let's go through our list here and see what else we have. Um, let's see. Got gold and silver in here. I keep commodities on here because, you know, I'm a commodities guy as well. Oracle, uh, hanging in there. We have a position on Oracle, a put sell that we sold, uh, doing, working for us. Even if the stock goes sideways, selling put options works. Netflix, let's take a look at Netflix. Down, hovering on the lows here around, you know, it closed at 100 just under 187. It may have found its support here. This is, uh, you know, about 160 or 170 something level, this line right here. So it couldn't get through it yet. And here's the 50 day moving average. So it's kind of hugging on that. It's got the 20 day as well. Um, looks like Netflix could be getting ready to maybe make that turn and start to go up. But you never know. Earnings is just the last two earnings we've had these massive massive gap downs so i think people are still a little gun shy to you know go all in on on netflix because the next earnings announcement could drop it down again so you got to be careful but it has come down a long way here is the highs near 700 dollars a share and now still under 200 dollars a share uh, netflix in the long run we got to go back to the monthly see where it's been so look at that that's just Oof, that's a rough move right there. And it happened pretty quick too. So here's the 200 day, 200 month moving average right here, lurking about $140 a share. Um, you know, could that be the next stop or could we, or did we find support uh, where we are now? So keep an eye on Netflix, play with caution uh, if you want to play with it at all. Uh, Walmart, talk about Walmart. Um, you know, I'm a believer in Walmart, bought some down here in the 120 level, uh, got really oversold and bounced pretty good. So Walmart will find its way back. It may take a little while. Target is a play that we got into just this week as well. What I liked about Target, here's Target. Obviously we had a huge gap here, came down, still going slightly lower. But what I liked is that the RSI was sloping upwards. When you have a stock that's just still kind of moving down a little, but the RSI is moving up at the same time. That's what we call bullish divergence. It means the selling is slowing down and the selling may become exhausted and that, you know, the bull run may start up again. So we got into a, a spread, a put spread that we sold on Target. It is a bullish play. So I like to see Target turn the corner and maybe move up. Even sideways actions, sideways action would work for us as well. Um, what else we have? The healthcare stocks, we always talk about those. Eli Lilly, and you're the highs. Br Bristol Myers, hanging in there. Pfizer, doing okay. Merck, healthcare, you know, it's a great sector to be in for the long run. 
healthcare. Everyone needs healthcare. It's going to be around. Uh, Verizon still haven't gotten into Verizon yet. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Kellogg doing okay. Oh, PayPal. Let's take a look at PayPal and Square as we typically do. Still down at the lows. The the payment space hugging this 20-day moving average looks like another potential down leg could occur. It hasn't hasn't found the bottom yet. Square. Same thing. Just just gotten you know crushed uh, around sixty-seven dollars. Like PayPal hugging along the 20-day moving average here. You know these guys. I don't see a massive rally coming anytime soon yet. You know, earnings, the next round of earnings are going to be coming up uh, starting in um, late July. So in a few weeks. So we'll get to see what some of these, how these companies did in the last three quarters. Um, Costco, still doing okay. We got McDonald's doing all right. Pepsi, uh, doing good. Coke, we always talk about Coca-Cola. Long-term upwards trajectory. Let's look at the monthly on Coca-Cola. Just look at that. Just great. Here's the COVID. And then just re- regain that and made has made all-time new highs just very recently. So Coke's in. I'm in for the long run. Great dividend pair. Dividend aristocrat. We like Coca-Cola. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Here's um, Warren Buffett. His Berkshire Hathaway. Down on the lows. You know, I've talked about this before. I have my report on the website, how to take advantage, how to piggyback Warren Buffett with a great option strategy. Check that out on our website if, you, if you're if you interested in that. We talked about Twitter, Facebook, down near the lows. I'm not a big fan. IBM doing okay. Google, don't really mess around with Google too much underneath this support, this now resistance area. Um, what else we got? Chewy I liked. I liked the... The rounded bottom that Chewy was making, here was a line in the sand right here. I don't know when I drew this, but it has, bound, it has broken through that. Unfortunately for me, Chewy has not been trading that long. Only started in 2019. I really don't like to get involved with stocks that have not been around for at least five years. But I kept it on the chart. I uh, had made this nice rounded bottom. Here was the, the, the resistance line that had popped right through that. That was good for you know a $10 move. So if anyone was in Chewy, congratulations on that. Let's see what else we have. That's really about it. Clorox, Colgate, yep. All right, so let's quickly go back to the SPY, wrap it up here. As we said, market's in a downtrend, but possibly we got a little up move here. Be careful. We've got the upper edge of the downtrending channel and the 50-day moving average lurking. Anything next week, we may get up into the low to mid 390 range on the SPY. Keep an eye on that. If it can keep going, then I'm going to get a little more enthusiastic about this next bull leg. But if it gets knocked back down, be aware it could come down and make new recent lows. All right, so that's it for the Saturday synopsis. Let's quickly go to our website, smartoptionsseller.com. We're all about put selling and, and selling put option credit spreads. That's our gig that's what we like to do. Go to the, our website here, smartoptionsseller.com, put selling basics. This is our free ebook to learn about selling put options. Put your name and address in. We'll send you a free copy. In the email that you'll get from us is the link for the ebook. So look for that link within the email that we send you. Here's our services tab. We have our two newsletters and our one on one coaching sessions. We've been helping a lot of students get up to speed on, on how to trade options. All right, that's all for me today. Hope this video is helpful. Free video. Give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that red subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner. Leave me a comment. Send me an email. I'm here to help. Been in the business 30 years and uh, I love answering your questions. All right, that's all for me today. Hope everyone has a great weekend and a great trading week ahead. I will not be around next Saturday, so I'll probably see you maybe the Saturday after that, depending what the schedule. All right, have a great weekend. This is Lee Lowell signing off.